okay? In 1928, Demidenko showed that the plants will excrete 27% of their whole body mass back into the soil in nutrition. So what that means, if a plant, if you take a plant and pull it out of the ground and the plant weighs 10 pounds, in its lifetime, it will inject 27% of its body weight back into the soil as vitamins, minerals, fats, carbohydrates, proteins, and enzymes. And guess why it's putting that stuff back into the soil? Why do you think it's doing that? It's feeding the microorganisms. There's a working relationship. The microorganisms break the plants, the soil down and feed it to the plants. And then what, when microorganisms need things, the plant sends things back down to it. So they each have the capacity to produce things the other one can't produce. So they have a working symbiotic, like a yin-yang relationship. And interestingly enough, if you just let nature do its thing, what you guys call weeds, wherever weeds grow, those are the exact plants that will produce the vitamins, minerals, and enzymes to rebalance the soil. So what do we do with our genius? We come along and spray Roundup all over the place, kill all the weeds, and keep the soil completely out of balance and dead, and we can't figure out why we're tired and sick all the time. Right? But the whole system's beautifully balanced if we just get the hell out of the way. Okay? Some of you might be wondering, well, how come they don't teach us in universities? I'll tell you why. Almost every single agricultural program in the United States and in the world is sponsored by companies like DuPont and Monsanto. And whenever you teach this kind of stuff, they will remove your funding. As a matter of fact, if you do research into a man named William A. Albrecht, he produced over 800 papers on soil science full of this kind of information. He was ultimatum by the university. They said, if you don't stop teaching this stuff to our students, we have to fire you or you've got to resign because our sponsors are going to pull our funding. So he said, well, screw them, I quit then. And that, there's many cases like that. I could sit here and give you a whole lecture just on that kind of stuff. Okay. That's why they say money is the root of all evil, okay? Too bad it's uh, not rooted into health. Now we're going to talk about deep digestion. What we've been talking about so far is within the realm of the topsoil. The earthworms go down typically to the depth of the roots of the plants in that region. So earthworms might go meter, a meter and a half down in the soil. Topsoil is usually, you know, like a foot maybe 18 inches in a healthy area. In a lot of places in the United States, topsoil is down to one or two inches because we're, we're losing it. We'd lost 61% of our farmable topsoil by the year 1937. I'll say that again, just so it sinks in. By the year 1937, we had so damaged our soils, we had lost 61% of our farmable topsoils in this country. You'd be shocked in the, in the United States. You'd be shocked to know how much food is imported into Canada and the United States from other countries. And you'd also be shocked to know that the major chemical corporations practically force these third world countries to use chemicals that are banned here and they ship them right back to your supermarket. Okay? So you're still eating DDT, Lindane, and all sorts of other crap. To save time, let me just tell you a few things about worms. They dig holes down, they aerate the soil, they eat things as they go, they eat grass, they eat anything they can put in their mouth, and when they poop it out the back end, it's caviar for plants. Okay? There's no organism in the world like an earthworm. They're extremely important. They're food for many animals. Their activity and their castings are widely used to increase crop yields and plant yields. They're key, a key natural element to improving and enriching soils. And on a good field, an organic field, an acre, so an acre is about... 440, I think it's uh, maybe three or four football fields, if I remember right. On one acre of soil that's left alone out in nature, earthworms produce 10 to 15 tons of castings a year. That's poops. Okay, that's earthworm. A castings and earthworm poop. They'll produce 10 to 15 tons of that stuff to feed the plants every year all by themselves if you leave them alone. Okay? Here's what friend Sykes says about the earthworms. Friend Sykes informs us that these castings are a highly fertile mixture of soil, minerals, and plant food. And because of its solubility, is immediately assimilable to the plants growing on the land. Here's a killer. 
It will therefore be seen that the earthworm is the most important cultivator on the whole farm. Its populations under all circumstances must be maintained and no act of husbandry must be indulged which will reduce its numbers. Okay? Keep that in mind. Who can tell me what the name of the most commonly used fertilizer is out on farms these days? Anyone know? NPK fertilizer. It's a salt. What happens when you put a salt on a worm? <coughs> you kill it. And they found that bird traffic is 40 to 60% reduced over any field where they've used chemical fertilizers. Why? Because they kill all the worms. There's nothing for the birds to eat. So if the birds don't have anything to eat, they have to migrate to other places, and that creates imbalances in nature. Here you see a researcher put some grass up on top of a pepper plant and left the grass up there, and then the earthworms, within minutes, came out of the soil and started eating the grass, and only two days later they had pulled all the grass. Now this is in a little potted pepper plant. It's a little pepper plant, you know, about the pot's about a foot tall and a foot wide, right? And the earthworms came out of the soil and ate that whole patch of grass in two days. They sucked that right down into the soil, ate it, they'll be pooping it out, and that plant and that earthworm will be dancing together like it should be. Okay? So, this is very, very important because the earthworm poops are food for all the microorganisms in there, and that little pepper plant will make someone a very nutritious little uh, addition to a meal. Now, many people aren't aware of it, but the soil has a very, very important electromagnetic relationship with the plants. The sun produces bursts and huge amounts of photons, but the sun's so powerful it can do something that only the sun can do. It can split photons into electromagnetic packets that are diamagnetic and paramagnetic. Diamagnetic means it, it does not have an affinity to a magnet, or if you take a diamagnetic substance and put a magnet near it, it'll push it away. If you take a paramagnetic substance, and it'll, it has an affinity to a magnet, so a magnet will collect it, but it's not magnetizable. Okay? So here you see S, that's your paramagnetic packets, and N is your diamagnetic packets, and it turns out that there are numerous specific types of rocks in the ground that will collect paramagnetic energy. The higher the paramagnetic energy in the soil, the better the plants do. The reason is, is that the paramagnetic is the equivalent of a positive in an electromagnetic circuit. Diamagnetic, which is your water in your body and your physical tissues are diamagnetic. So whenever you have rocks in the soil and the microorganisms creating humus stores paramagnetic energy. So when you have a healthy microorganism population and lots of humus, you store paramagnetic energy in the soil. So you need the right rocks and the right soil. And so what happens is the sun, particularly when there's solar flares, blast these energy packets out. The plant sucks the energy in through the leaves. The soil sucks it in through the root structures and through the microorganisms and the humus structure. Remember I said they act like antennas. This is what they're receiving. And that creates an electromagnetic circuit. So water and plant tissue has a relatively negative charge, okay? And then there's a relatively positive charge in the soil and the rocks. So if you understand basic electromagnetism, you know the Earth is wrapped in an electromagnetic field. You know that, right? You know how, have you seen a picture of the electromagnetic field? Well, an electrical field works in 90 degrees opposition to any magnetic field. So as the magnetic field wraps itself around the Earth, it shoots an electrical potential off. So every plant that absorbs the paramagnetic energy from the sun and from the rocks, which only happens in soils that are properly balanced, produces an electrical current at 90 degree angle to the phase or to the angle of the surface of the Earth, and that's why plants grow up toward the sun. So you understand that? Okay. Now look at this. This is a picture of an Irish round tower, and it might interest you to know that almost all the ancient church steeples and churches, anywhere where there was monks, almost all the buildings the monks built were made out of the exact rocks that were known to be paramagnetic. 